Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nowley again and I'm going to now finish off this uh, series of videos in stoichiometry with um, an example in doing a stoichiometry problem and putting everything together, all the different concepts we learn uh, in this chapter, okay? So generally speaking, you can kind of imagine a stoichiometry problem given as uh, follows and you can kind of set up the problem or solve them using this particular relationship, okay? So one of the things that you can be given is you can be given a, a mass of a, of a substance. You can be given a volume of a substance, uh, which we'll really won't see much in this particular chapter, um, but we will see it later when we start talking about gases. And you'll see them sometimes given as molar concentration. Again, not something we'll see at this point, but we'll see later on when we start talking about aqueous species. So right now a lot of it will be given in mass or sometimes in volumes, but the volumes can be solved through density type uh, uh, approaches. Now one of the things you have to do when whatever you're given is you have to convert it to number of moles. The reason you need to do that is because the number of moles will then allow you to calculate limiting react and then that's almost always one of the first steps you have to do is figure out the limiting reactant, okay, from the balance equation. Once you figure out the number of moles and figure out the limiting reactant, usually what you need to do is then calculate some unknown or something that you want to figure out. Okay, so here it's labeled as wanted, basically something that you want to know what the mass of, what the volume of, and so on. In order to calculate that mass, you usually need to use your mole ratio. And the mole ratio is just the ratio of the coefficients of the two species. Okay, so if you have 2a going to 3b, then every 2a uh, molecule will go to make 3b molecules, and that's the mole ratio there. That's what we call stoichiometric relationships. And then at the end, you get the number of moles of the quantity that you're, or the species that you're looking for, and usually what you need to do is then convert it back to mass, and you can use molar mass in that case to convert it back to mass. And if you're being asked volume, you can convert it using density. And of course, there's other conversions here as well that you might need, okay? All right, so that's the general approach. I'm going to illustrate this approach with the problem shown right here. Uh, I want you to kind of write it, you know, write it down because we're going to work on it in, on the blank paper in the next uh, page. So you have this reaction here, Fe2O3 plus CO going to Fe and CO2, and you have a series of questions that are being asked based on that reaction, okay? All right, the first one is just how many grams of iron can be produced from, if you were to mix two kilograms of the first reactant plus 900 grams of the second reactant. Okay, let's start working on these problems in the next uh, slide. Okay, so first things first, what we have to start with is the equation. So we have uh, the following equation, Fe2O3 plus CO going to 2Fe, uh, going to, I'm sorry, Fe plus CO2, okay? So there's a couple of things you have to remember when you're dealing with chemical equation. And the first one is, of course, what the concept we learned uh, earlier in the previous topic, which is balance. We have to first balance the equation. And then secondly, usually we need to figure out what our limiting reactant is. Okay, so let's try to balance this equation. You can see that if I were to put two here, that would balance the iron. Uh, but then you can see the carbon and the oxygen are not balanced. So uh, you can figure out basically numbers that would balance this out. If I use 2 and 2 here, that's not going to balance it out. It's going to balance the carbon, but not the oxygen. But if I were to put 3 <clears throat> and 3 here, then I will have everything balanced because now I have two irons on both sides, 3 oxygen, 3 oxygen, that gives me 6 oxygen, which is what I have on the product side. And then I have 3 carbons, which is what I have on the product side as well. So now the equation is balanced with this coefficient, 3, two and three and then of course one for the Fe2O3. The next uh, goal we have is to calculate, figure out the limiting reactant because if you remember uh, back to that first question, let me just pop that slide back in again. You can see here that the first question is asking you about uh, the number of iron, the number of grams of iron I should say, mass of iron that could be produced 
if you were to react um, two kilograms of this reactant versus 900 grams of that reactant. So obviously, conceptually, what you need to do here is figure out which of the two is limiting reactant. And that reactant will then be the one that determines how much iron will be produced. Okay. Okay, so if we go back to our problems, we said that we have the two reactants, so we have to figure out limiting reactants. So remember that we talked about limiting reactants in the previous video, so I'm just going to use the method that I call method one, which basically requires me to figure out the number of moles of each of these reactants. So I'm going to figure out the number of moles of Fe2O3. Um, in this case, uh, we, I'm starting with 200, 2 kilograms, so I'm just going to convert that to grams right away, 2,000 grams, divided by the molar mass of this compound, which if you look up the periodic table, should give you 160 grams per mole. And you can see the grams would cancel, leaving me with just moles, and you divide those two numbers together, you get 12.5 moles of the first reactant. I'm going to do the same for the second reactant, which is carbon monoxide. I have 900 grams to begin with, and then I'm going to divide that by the molar mass of carbon monoxide, which is 28, and then cancel the grams. I get 32.143 moles. Okay? Now then what you want to do here, remember, is the second step of this problem, which is to um, you know, change the color here so we can see that part of the problem. So the second part, if you want to use this method to determine limiting reactant, is you have to divide them by the stoichiometric coefficient because you're really asking how much of this, uh, you know, uh, how, how much of this material do I need for every uh, reaction to happen. So in this case, I'm going to need one of this every time. So then I'm just going to take my starting material and divide it by one, which gives me still 12.5 moles. But then with this one, because it's CO, I'm going to divide it by the stoichiometric coefficient for CO, which is three. And if you do that division, what you get is 10.71 mole. And because of the comparison of these two numbers, you notice that one, uh, the number that's smaller, I'm going to switch back now to the um, color that I had earlier. Because of this um, comparison, I can see that the CO is a smaller one. In other words, it would basically give me less product in the end. So then my limiting reactant here is... CO. Okay. Now again, if you're a little confused with this, the way of determining limiting reactant like this, you can go back and look at that video again, the one that we talked about limiting reactant, and see how I actually used that pizza example to, you know, solve for a limiting reactant. And I'm basically doing exactly the same thing here for this equation. Okay. Once you figure out that CO is limiting reactant, then what you need to do is just use it to figure out how much product you're going to get, in this case, iron. So I'm just going to use one long equation mass of iron that I will produce assuming I use up all my limiting reactant, all my CO would be. I'm going to start with the amount of CO I have which is 32.143 moles, right? That's what I have just from the 900 grams. I'm going to multiply that by my mole-mole relationship or my stoichiometric relationship. I want to cancel my CO so I want to put that at the bottom and I want to have the iron at the top. So in this case it's 2 over 3. And then lastly I want to convert this to grams of iron. And of course that means that I have to cancel the moles of iron. So that's just a um, molar mass number and 56 would be the one for iron. If you multiply across all the units would correctly cancel leaving you with grams of iron at the end. And then the answer that you should get would be 12 hundred grams of iron. Okay? So now we want to answer a second question which is how much of the excess reactant in kilograms is left? 
So remember that we have these two reactants. We have the limiting and we have the excess reactant. The excess reactant, by definition, are reactants that are in excess of the limiting reactant, which means that after the reaction is over, you have some of this excess reactant left over. The question here is asking how much of that excess reactant is left over. Okay, so if you think about that calculation, you want to know how much of your excess reactant is left, and the way you have to figure out must be what you have starting uh, initially, which is a larger amount, minus what you use up or what you consume during the reaction. So basically the first thing to figure out, we know this number already, the initial mass. Our goal is just to figure out this number and then we can subtract one from the other to figure out how much is left. Okay, So how do you figure out the mass of excess reactant consumed during the reaction? Well, the same way that you figure out the mass of iron earlier, you need to use your limiting reactant. So I'm going to say mass of excess reactant use in reaction. It'd be my limiting reactant, which remember was 32.143 mole carbon monoxide. Now I'm going to relate the carbon monoxide to the excess reactant, which is Fe203. So remember that that's my other reactant. And then I look up the stoichiometric relationship. It's one of this to three of that. And then lastly, I'm going to multiply this by the molar mass because that will tell me how much of it in terms of mass, how much of the excess reactant is used up. So the molar mass of Fe203 is 160 grams per mole. Again, this would refer to Fe203 specifically. Okay. Then everything will cancel out. The end you would get 17, 14 grams um, of the Fe203 that's used during the reaction. So then mass of Fe203 left would just be what you started with, which remember was 2,000 grams minus 17, 14 grams. And so you're left with um, 286 grams. The answer asked for uh, to express it in kilograms, so you just say 2.286 kilogram. Okay, going back to the original question, we have two additional questions related to yield. Now, the first one is theoretical yield of iron. The next one is percent yield of this uh, reaction is our number. What's the actual yield? You look at question number uh, three here, or question C, it's asking what's the theoretical yield of iron, which really just means that what is the amount of iron you expect to get uh, if all your limiting reactant is consumed? Well, we already answered that question. That was answered in A. So really, uh, the answer here would be exactly identical to the answer that you had in A. The reason I ask this question is just to see if you understand the definition of theoretical yield, you know, whether the you know you understand that that what you calculated in part a is really a theoretical yield uh, for iron for this reaction okay so once you understand that then we can move on to part d which is saying that you have a percent yield of a certain number what's the actual yield okay so here's the question the question is to um, ask you about actual yield given that we know something about the percent yield okay now so again if you think about it definition of percent yield is actual over theoretical times a hundred percent so if you want to determine the actual yield if you just rearrange this equation really then what you have to do is take percent yield times theoretical and that will give you the actual yield right so you just rearrange that equation a little bit and that's what I'll do here I'll just put in this uh, percent yield. Now, of course, if you express it this way, you have you express it as a fraction. So 77% is just 0.77. The theoretical yield we calculated in part A. So that's 1,200 grams. If you multiply these two numbers, then you get 924 grams as your actual yield. OK. So I hope this example illustrates all the different concepts that you have to use to solve a stoichiometry problem and in class we'll have a lot more practice on different types of problems that uh, have stoichiometric components in them.